Right, so today we've got something in. Um, here, some bikes there. And um, there we go. That must be it. Just another job. The guy buggered up his old seat post. So that one Drive. So, what have we got here? This one, Elite Wheels Drive. Don't know what drive means. Maybe it's the model number. Explore your limits. Most of these products now come packed pretty much the same way now. They're all packed with these dividers in them and then bags over them. Very nice, that's very thick, very thick packaging. Hmm. So we've got... Now some of these are carbon spokes as well, I don't know what sort of hubs yet. Extremely glossy rim there. Yeah, carbon spokes, glossy. Take that off because you don't need that thing. Very nice. Gosh, that's light. First thing we're going to do is weigh these wheels. 680 grams for the rear wheel. 560 grams for the front wheel. So what's that? 1240, 1240 grams, wow. And they're a 50 millimeter section rim. So our first impressions, glossy rim, beautiful silvery sort of hubs, carbon spokes, extremely light. Spoke tension is very high. What also comes with, explore your limits. Lock ring, a tire lever, unusual looking one, two tire levers, valves, what's in here, what have we got here, it's a pair of socks, oh very nice, nice gift, drive. Ooh. So included is a set of tire levers, rotor lock rings, tubeless valves, rim tape and spare spokes. Tell you what, you could sit and look at these wheels for a while, they're very nice looking, but we've got to get down to serious business, right? 28mm external width and 21 internal. So these wheels will take up to 38C tyre width. The internal section of the rim is very round, seems to be the trend these days. The decals are not just stickers. If you run your fingers over, you can feel that they're there. There's a slight rise, but you can't use your fingernail or something. You can't actually peel them off. So they're under the layer of clear. So that's good. All except for one sticker. And it says ceramic there. That's just an ordinary sticker on the outside. You can peel that one off. But all the others, every single other one, including these ones next to the ceramic one there, they're all under the clear coat. This dishing tool measures down to 0.1 of a millimetre. That's about the width of a human hair. Any difference? No, surely not. Just double checking. Well, they're perfect. Front one's perfect. Zero. Point three. Double check. Zero. Point two. Oh. The dishing is excellent. Front wheel. 
This is the lateral true, or commonly called the sideways wobble. The indicator going up and down at regular intervals usually occurs because the spokes pull the rim slightly out of shape where they join the rim. So it looks like the maximum deviation on this front wheel is 0.42mm. Rear wheel. Twenty-four. Twenty-five, we'll call that twenty-five. Yep. Twenty-five, point two five mil. This is the vertical true or up and down. Yeah, twenty-four, twenty-five. Right, twenty-five, point two five. Bit of a glitch there, just there. See? So there's something on the rim. We'll have a look at that in a minute. So we're looking at around about say 20.2 millimeter. That's fine. That glitch we just found was caused by a very small spillage of the glossy final coat that they put on the rim. Do you think you'd feel that as a bump when you ride? Now let's have a look at the carbon work inside of these Elite Wheels drive rims, because we can. First off we see the spoke nipple, and it looks round because we're looking directly down on top of it. It's difficult to see, but it's actually hexagonal shaped. We'll see that in a minute. Quickly moving on to the side there of the nipple, and you can see an extra layer of carbon fibre. This runs all the way around the rim bed. It gives an extra layer of reinforcement for the high tension loading from the spokes. Moving further to the side, looking down along the rim, and you can see a wrinkle there. Certainly very common. I've yet to see a wrinkle-free rim yet. Otherwise, looking very clean. Let's choose another spoke hole. And we can see there's a wrinkle going directly across the spoke nipple there. Looking to the side, actually quite a bit more wrinkling there than the previous hole. And Quite a few splash marks, that's just leftover resin. That's no big deal. Ah, now here we've got, looks like, what would be leftover bits of the bladder, which have been torn off, stuck to the top of the rim somehow. That's also not all that uncommon. Now we'll just have a look further along the rim, and you can see there's the spoke nipple, and indeed it's either square or hexagonal, not round. As you see here, straight on. Let's move quite a way away from those two spoke holes and have a look at one almost at the opposite side of the rim. There's the nipple again, and we see some wrinkling. And there's the valve hole, quite clean. Moving on to have a look at the side walls. It's not too bad. It's certainly a lot different than the outside, isn't it? On the outside, it's nice and clean and polished and made well. On the inside, it's all rough. Oh well, beauty can only be skin deep. There's a bit of a patch there. Quickly having a look through the spoke hole and you can see the hub shell through the other side there. And on the side, you can see the nipple is indeed hexagonal shaped. And there's the next one along. Because the front and rear rims are made in an identical manner, we can presume that the other rim will be pretty much the same inside. The only difference being basically the number of holes drilled. Spoke tension. The more equal the spoke tension, the better. Now rather than show you every single spoke tension on this meter, here's the figures for the front and rear wheels. Plug those figures into a circular graph app and this is what you get. I've set this at the most sensitive tolerance, 5%, and every spoke gets the green tick. Very even tension and you can see it on the graph. Excellent. And having a look at the rear wheel at 5% again, they will get the green tick and the graph is all very even. Another excellent wheel. Hubs, there's no name written on there, except that little sticker which says drive, so who knows what brand hubs are. Extremely smooth. Now these are ceramic bearings and there's no stickiness, no grabbing. 
They're very nice socks. You want to hear the sound, don't you? But slow, fast. Very good. The hubs are amazingly smooth <laughs> and very free as well. So it's not using the ceramic bearings that normally you find in some Chinese wheels. These are very good. Well, at least initially when they're from the box brand new, they're good and they might change later on. Who knows? Hopefully not because they are beautiful. And the front wheel's the same. Can't feel a thing, probably. Fast or slow? Yep. Fine. Let's have a look inside the hub. To access the free hub, you remove the axle spacer on the rotor side. And there you'll see two little splits. Ordinary 17mm cone spanner on that side. And on the other side, you just need to put something across there, either an Allen key or... You can use the other side of the spoke wrench if you want, and that holds it, and then you undo it. Ceramic bearings in the free hub body. Remove the free hub body. It's a four pull clutch, light, easy to maintain, and very reliable. Did you know the pull and spring clutch system has been around since 1869? Initially, a single sprocket, then later on, Quite a few sprockets were added and today 11 12 13 but the basic ratchet and pole system still works back to the hub and the ceramic bearings in the hub shell as well now i'm not going to go pulling out the poles and springs but feeling them they're nice and strong and nice and even all the way around that's fine good amount of grease not too much not too little and the right viscosity so that's fine so we'll whack it all back together now Using a very strong magnet, only just sticking. So that free hub body is aluminium. If it was steel, it would be going <coughs> like this. And then you can't get it off. <laughs> it's probably attracted to some of the steel underneath the bearings, the race of the bearing itself, which of course is a hybrid ceramic bearing, ceramic balls with steel races. So the magnets to the steel race underneath the aluminium body. Spokes, of course they're carbon fibre. How many are there? On the cassette drive side there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16 and on the disc rotor side there are 2, 4, 6, 8. So exactly half the number on the opposite side of the drive side. So 16 and 8 on the rear wheel. Front wheel on the rotor side, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, and 7 on the non-disc side for the front wheel. A carbon fibre is 10 times stronger than steel, but 5 times lighter. So to keep up to date with modern technology, Superman, the man of steel, should really be today Superman, the man of carbon fibre. <laughs> so what does it mean if you make your spokes out of carbon fibre instead of steel like we used to do? It means you're going to save between 50 to 70 grams each wheel. So that's between 100 and 140 grams off of your wheel set. 140 grams, just weighing it, that's like throwing this water bottle and the water in it, a couple of decent mouthfuls, straight off your bike. <laughs> However, carbon fibre is different than steel in a mechanical way. You can't just put a spoke of carbon fibre in a wheel like you usually do with your steel spokes and screw them up with a threaded nipple. No, it's different. Carbon doesn't, doesn't like that to be machined in such a way and it won't hold onto a thread very well. So you'll find with these spokes, I just use this side, this part here, which looks like a nipple, is not a nipple. It's not threaded. This spoke is actually bonded into there and has a flanged end. So it's held in really strong. So you can't adjust anything here, even though it looks like a nipple with the standard 14 gauge little square on there. So you forget that end altogether. The way you adjust it is up here on this end and this part here sticking out also looks like a 14 gauge for your standard spoke key but it's not you've actually got to use a socket five and a half millimeter socket and you go in through the hole and that's how you adjust the nipple 
So don't go using a spokey in the traditional way. Use a five and a half socket and that's how you true the wheel or replace your spoke. It comes with a tubeless rim tape, but you can also use it as an ordinary rim tape. Just wrap it around, put a hole there with your valve goes and just use your tube as normal. So it doubles either way, tubeless or tubed. Checking spoke twist for maximum aerodynamics from your wheels. This tool fits on the blade of the spoke and points in the direction of the blade. Rather than show you every single spoke, we did find one spoke on this rear wheel that was out. Onto the front wheel and we found two spokes were out. I'd say that's passable, passable the front wheel. I mean if you want to be a perfectionist, these wheels are really really nice and you'd expect almost pretty much perfection out of them. So I would say they've fallen short of the mark of perfection, but almost there. Just quickly talking about the spokes where they cross. Now if you get a card or a piece of paper or something like that, these spokes are not touching. Okay, so as they cross on a lot of the older wheels they used to touch as they go, these ones they don't cross anywhere. Now that's probably a good thing for carbon spokes because if you get a slight bit of movement, these are very high tension, but if you do get some movement, which is probably micro amount of movement, you'll get the rubbing at the cross where they touch. And on carbon spokes, when you rub together, they might be nice and strong, but carbon will also, with a bit of dirt in there, will abrase very easily. So especially with the resin, the resin will abrase more than the carbon itself. So you'll end up with your spoke highly likely to break at this point where they cross. And you don't want that. You don't want your carbon spokes to break. And there's a reason for that, because you know what carbon does? It doesn't just break gently, it breaks catastrophically. So if you get one spoke that breaks catastrophically, crack, it'll just break. It'll rely, the rest of the pressure will rely on the rest of the spokes. Instead of giving away a bit, high chance that they're also going to break. So you'll end up with your whole wheel collapsing. I'm not saying it will, but it's a high chance of it. That's the only problem with your carbon spokes. As a final word on these wheels without actually riding them, I would say with all really light wheels like this with carbon spokes, the design to be high tension, very light wheels, I'd say good for racing, for race day, but not so for everyday riding. I mean, you probably could, they'll last quite a while, I would say, but definitely a race wheel. If you want your everyday wheel with your deep section, sure, you'll get some fairly light ones, but go for steel spokes, stainless steel or ordinary steel spokes. Once everybody starts saying, look, these carbon spokes have lasted me five years and I ride them every third day or something like that, then you know if everybody's saying that, then they're reliable. But at the moment, still only early early stages to tell how carbon spokes perform on an everyday bike. Let's do a comparison. So we've got these new drive wheels and we've got the hyper wheels from Windspace. Now these are also carbon spokes, ultra lightweight. Even though they're a deeper section, these are 65 and they're the 50s. So these might look racier and they're slightly heavier because of the deeper section. Other than that, the hub is almost identical. This one's shiny. This one is black. The cassette free hub body is the same. The spokes, very, very similar. And the same sort of scenario, although these ones on this side of the rotor are not crossed, whereas they're crossed on the rotor on that side, on the dry, on the elite wheels. Very, very similar. So if you like the matte, the stealthy matte look in the wind space, but I tell you what, these will turn your heads. <laughs> these will certainly turn heads when you're riding down the road. They're so shiny, especially the rims with that crinkled velvet effect. Oh, it's a hard choice. What would you like? Stealthy look or shiny look at me look? <laughs>
So here's the tyres we're going to use Vittorio Graphene 2 Rubino Pros. I use the same tyres every time, all the time, all the bikes and all the wheels. That way you do a fair comparison. Because tyres have a big uh, major performance on your wheels. So if you use a lighter tyre or a heavier tyre, you'll notice a difference, especially if you're sensitive to it. So we'll use the same tyres, we'll get a fair comparison. Foldable tyres, nice. Wire runs are a little bit harder to get on your rims usually. Easy done. This is an Audi pump. $14 Australian or something, $14, $15. Really good, been using it for quite some time now. That's better. So, got a gauge, metal foot, good shape handle, slightly ergonomic. Very nice. Very nice. You can tell I like Victoria tyres, eh? Now this Rubino I didn't realise is tubeless ready, I got that by mistake, doesn't matter. Um, but take note, the tubeless ready tyres are actually heavier than the non-tubeless ready ones in, in the same brand and same model. So Rubino Pro 2 Graphene, tubeless ready, is heavier slightly than the Victoria Rubino Pro 2 Graphene ordinary one. That makes sense? So if you're going to buy a tyre and you're using tubes, you don't need to go for the tubeless ready because you'll be adding weight to your bike. So no problems with fitting tyres and tubes, let's now get these wheels on the bike. So I'm going to have a bit of a gripe here. Through axle wheels are all very well and they fit in nicely and squarely and everything is fine. Except quite often the distance, the hub fittings, distance bet between the rotor where it should be on the hub is slightly different with almost every wheel set I've tried. With those Aviav wheels we just had on, the rotors on those hubs were perfectly central between the brake pads. That's how we set them up. This one is slightly on the right side and this one I haven't even had a look at yet. So that's the thing, is now you've got to adjust the calipers. What a hassle for every time you put in another wheel set in. So if you've got, say, a training wheel set and a race wheel set, this would be a nice race wheel set, and you go and change them over, that means you've got to adjust your calipers every time because the rotors may be slightly off-center to your previous wheels. Better. Having a look at Elite Wheels themselves, just type in EliteWheels.com and that'll take you to their home website. Elite Wheels specialise only in wheels, as the name suggests, so they don't sell frames and bits and pieces. So this is their homepage and they feature the drive rule set. Further down, who are these people? Uh, global service, that's good, so they're selling worldwide. Here's some of the wheels they do, road, mountain bike, gravel and triathlon. We'll click on Drive 50D here, D standing for disc, so that's the wheels we've been looking at in this video. Prices, they're in US dollars, so this is $1,189 US for the drive wheel set. And choose the free hub body that you need according to your cassette or group set. Further along you'll see a warranty, a thousand days, so what's that? Mm, two and a half years. And further along you see some nice fancy pictures, gum wall tyres, spokes, hubs, ceramic bearing hubs. If and when you do decide to buy a set of wheels from Elite, go to the shopping basket, type into the coupon box OzCycle15 and you'll get a discount. It's not for me, it's for you. Oh, Tell them what you think of the wheels. Oh, yeah. yeah, the wheels don't look that good. I reckon you should get rid of the satin sort of heel ply look. There you go, so the crinkly shiny bit sort of looks a bit pretty. A bit pretty. Yeah, a bit pretty and a bit all uneven. Probably uh, just make a matte black that look good. Like those beautiful wheels behind it. <laughs> so, what do you reckon? These wheels look too pretty with their finish, 
Or would you rather have a bit more of a plain, no frills look? Of course, the most important thing is how do they ride? Flat ride today, mostly. Just the aerodynamics. Don't think they're any more aerodynamic than other wheels. So, still perform nice. Feels nice and comfy to ride. First thing you notice about carbon spoke wheels, I've ridden about four or five pair now, is and they're all the same, is they're quieter. They're significantly quieter than your deep dish carbon rims with steel spokes. With the deep dish wheels with steel spokes you get that uh, whooshing metallic -y resonating sound. With these uh, carbon spokes, sort of a dead sound, no sound. Uh, yeah, they definitely don't resonate. You basically, you just hear the tyres, the tyres on the road surface. They're also surprisingly comfortable considering the high tension that the spokes are under. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't say any more or less than steel spokes, but just considering the tension, you'd expect them to be, you know, you feel more bumps, but you don't. Very nice. That's the other thing. They climb really well as well. Decent climbing wheels. No, just, just, only just got him. Get him? Only just, only just by 10 metres. Please, go on. My brain is going to kick right, kick right, kick right. <laughs> <laughs> 